Hello and welcome back to Custode Central. Today we're going to have a, a bit of a shorter episode than usual um, and we're going to do kind of a deep dive into a bit of math, uh, particularly focusing on charges, um, the stratagem for Dreadhose, Cold Might of Marades, the value of rerolls, um, and how good is Tanglefoot. So let's have a look at first of all how likely is a charge to succeed and I'm fighting um, kind of you, you tend to play a variety of opponents when you play between casual and super competitive and you tend to find even among some of the the kind of mid-level competitive players a lot of them seem to be overestimating their sense of entitlement to making charges and they call themselves very unlucky when they kind of fail their seven eight nine inch charges um, and i just wanted to really drill down on some of the math here so one of the concepts i want to i want to get you doing in your games is to always always try and reduce the amount of charge that you need to make by using your movement properly. So you need to be planning ahead like a, a turn in advance, thinking, okay, this is my actual move range. This is gonna leave me with this much threat range. Um, and what percentage of the time am I likely to succeed in my charge? And what are the consequences if you fail in your charge? Um, now this is more of a factor in custode armies than in other armies, typically because you don't actually have that many units. So you're unlikely to have kind of what I call backup charges where you, you've got four or five charges going off on the same turn and your units tend to be very expensive so if you actually commit a unit to going out into the open you know you leave some cover you try and make a charge and you fail this can be game losing because now you're now you're not in cover so you've opened yourself up to line of sight you're unlikely to get any uh, you know dense cover saves uh, putting you on minus one to hit or you know like your light cover bonus etc so so kind of going out into the open and leaving yourself vulnerable to being shot because you failed your charge um, can be very devastating for your army. Now, if you're building your army with deep strike units in mind, you need to really understand the likelihood of that unit making its nine inch charge out of deep strike. And you're really going to fail uh, quite a high proportion of the time. So I think this would be a good time to pause the video and put into the comments how likely do you think it is to make a nine inch charge um, with no kind of modifiers um, out of deep strike. So do you think it's 80%, 70%, 60%, 50%, 40%, etc? I'm just going to pause it here just to give you a chance to think about it uh, before I move on to the next slide. All right, good. So this is what the frequency distribution actually looks like on 2d6. This is a cool little website that helps you simulate dice rolls. Um, I mean, you could you could kind of work it out manually, but it's really long, and this is a really nice website to to kind of check some of your math as well. Um, so, as a lot of you would have known, uh, seven is the most likely result um, on two d six. However, it being the most likely result means that you're going to make a seven inch charge more than fifty percent of the time, even though this is the average roll. So, what we have on the right here is your percentage chance of making a successful charge on the value that you actually need to roll, and it kind of trails off like this effectively um, so the important number to look at here for your deep strikes is the chance of you making a nine inch charge is only 27.7 percent and i think well maybe some of you would have known this already or, you know you might have had just a gut feeling it's about a third something like that um, but obviously this is not a very good percentage to base your game plan on if you build your army thinking okay i'm going to deep strike this unit and it really needs to make its nine inch charge out of deep strike and if you don't make the nine inch charge you consider yourself very unlucky you should kind of stop thinking like that and you should probably construct your army slightly differently so what happens if you think okay well if i don't make my my first charge i'll use a cp reroll so the way to calculate your chance of percent your percentage chance of making a charge with a reroll is to is to calculate the amount of times you will fail both and subtract that from 100%. Um, so because it's commutative, you basically multiply your chances of failing uh, and take that away from 100%. So once we do this, we see actually something like a six inch charge is, is very, very likely actually. So if you're not coming out of deep strike and you've got up to like a six inch charge um, and you have CP for a reroll, it's, it's pretty reliable because you're at 92.3% or better. Um, if you start going into the seven, seven, eight inch charge area, it becomes uh, a little bit closer. But you know, if you if you need to make a seven inch charge, it's kind of it's kind of still okay as long as you have CP for the reroll because you're at eighty two percent now, assuming then bottle fires. So it's not that bad. But once you start scaling out to eight and above, um, we go into what we call speculative territory. Now, obviously, there are going to be situations in games where you actually don't have that much choice. You just kind of have to commit 
to to making a charge and if you don't make the charge you know maybe that is game losing but you were kind of out of options there but what i really want to get people into the habit of doing is avoiding putting yourself into this situation in the first place because it's you're really leaving yourself at the mercy of the dice here now let's look what happens uh if you if you go dread host and you use the stratagem golden light of marades because this allows you to roll 3d6 and discard the lowest so if we look at the frequency distribution here, um, obviously everything has shifted uh, a little bit higher and you now see the average has moved from 7 to 8.46. And you might think, well, that's only moved up by 1.5, but however, it has it has basically doubled your chance of making a 9-inch charge. So now already we're, we're slightly better than we were with a 9-inch charge and 2d6 re-rolling if we do 3d6 discard lowest. Because that was 20, no. That was 47.7 versus now 52.3. So this is already better. Um, obviously, you've spent CP for Golden Light and Marades versus um, versus the CP reroll, but Golden Light and Marades allows you to do to to get two units to use 3d6. So this is a, obviously immediately an, impro an improvement. Now you can kind of ignore the lower numbers under nine here because effectively you don't get to use Golden Light. Um, under under nine inches um i suppose it, could, it, it would be nice to know if you wanted to use the vexilla teleport homostrat um and then you wanted to use golden light on top because you weren't unable to get units within three inches exactly per se um and under you know b between these figures this is still very very reliable but obviously now you're looking at quite a high cp cost to to vexilla in um for three cp plus golden light plus whatever you might have used to to put something into deep strike but these are these are good to know so you know if you need to make a six inch charge on 3d6 um it's very reliable you know you're at like 89 89 percent here so but the key number i want you to keep in mind is 52.3 percent um what now happens if we re-roll this so the key number here is if we re-roll 3d6 discard lowest and you're looking for nine um you're nine or above you get you you now reach a 77.2 percent and this is not still not amazing um but it's really not too bad um so the reason why i bring this up is i tend to see i well i have seen a lot of kind of battalion setups where people have multiple units in deep strike and i always kind of ask them hey have you thought about running double patrol because you could have actually just had a very small um dread host contingent and then used golden light and obviously this would have this would have boosted their their chances of making the nine inch charges out of deep strike because obviously rolling 3d6 discard lowest is better than even just a, a cp reroll um for your for your charge on 2d6 the benefit of this is actually you get to do this on two or three units rather than just one so obviously this this makes your game plan much more consistent because you're able to make your charges more consistently um so this is just a comparison between, you know, this is this is your chance of 2d6, 2d6 with a reroll, 3d6 discard lowest, and 3d6 um, discarding lowest with a reroll. So your percentages really skyrocket once you start doing golden light with with a reroll. Um, so what are the what are conclusions we want to get to on charging? So obviously nobody's going to look through all the slides and memorize everything. You, you kind of don't need to, but the really big takeaway I want people to get is, you know, if you make a nine inch charge without any rerolls, you're looking at about one and quarter. If you do 2d6 with a reroll, you're about one and a half. If you do 3d6 discard lowest, it's about one and a half. And if you do 3d6 discard lowest with the reroll, it's about three quarters at the time. So as I said, it's a significant improvement, but it's still kind of risky if your critical charge fails. Um, the other kind of takeaway is that a normal charge over seven inches should be considered kind of speculative and you shouldn't really be planning your early turns on making, you know, seven, eight, nine inch charges um, because there's, a, there's, there's quite a high likelihood that you won't make the charge and if you don't, you're going to get super punished as a custodian army. Okay, now let's have a, look, have a look at how good is Eternal Penitent. Now, all of you will know that um, Eternal Penitent will give a Dreadnought plus one attack and the ability to reroll charges. Now, you might think, actually, you might not even need, if you don't care about the plus one attack too much, um, you might think, well, I can always use a CP reroll if I fail my charge, and therefore I might not even need to spend CP on this reroll. But there's actually a hidden benefit to Eternal Penitent, 
which is that you can you can use a tunnel penitent on more than one unit in your army which effectively lets you reroll more than one unit's charge in the charge phase um, because the command reroll can only be used on one unit in the charge phase so this effectively allows you to get uh, much more consistent charging across multiple units in your army if your army relies on making your deep strike charges so if you invest heavily into deep strike units really consider um, spending the cp up front to put eternal penitent into your list and also consider using golden light of marades to make these charges even more reliable now let's have a look at how good is tanglefoot versus a normal charge so what we've got here is the the charge distance um, from your enemy to your units um, and this is the chance of them making um, that charge on 2d6 normally and the modified value is the chance of them making the charge if you do Tanglefoot. Now obviously Tanglefoot is a d6 addition to their charge range and it's got a flat distribution so effectively how you do this is if you're Tanglefooting at one inch you're thinking well you're going to force them on an equal proportion on a two inch charge, three inch charge, four inch charge, five inch charge, six inch charge, uh, seven inch charge on 2d6. Um, and what you do is you just average the chance of them making that cha those, those charges on 2d6 and this will give you your modified percentage if you tangle foot um, at one inch for example. And then obviously at the higher charge distances a lot of the time you will just make the charge completely um, impossible to make because opponents are unable to declare on, on units that are more than 12 inches away from you. Um, the delta is the absolute proportion that you have reduced their successful charge by and the delta as a percentage is the delta divided by their unmodified. Um, so as you can see, Tanglefoot's, Tanglefoot's pretty good almost all of the time. Now obviously, do you want to spend one CP to change a 100% uh, guaranteed charge to an 84% charge? Probably not. Um, but it does give you some some kind of chances um, in my mind kind of around the four inch area where they're they're dropping from 90 92 percent to 50 percent to make a charge for your one cp to tangle foot them is probably around the cutoff for me when i start thinking it's it's a good investment obviously if you go if if you do it at a, a higher a higher charge distance it makes tangle foot even more reliable you know at seven inches they're going they're dropping from about 60 percent to 16 percent which is obviously huge um and at the higher kind of charge charges you know at, at 10 11 inches you might think well i probably don't need to tangle foot here because they're unlikely to make the charge anyway and it's really up to you to make that risk assessment um, as to cost benefit for your opportunity cost for your cp now how good is tangle foot versus a reroll charge um and so it's the same thing again um, apart from we're now doing it versus, you know, what if the opponent gets to reroll the charge value? Um, here it's, it's exa exactly the same again with your modified, your delta, your delta as a percentage of um, unmodified. Um, and again here. So the important thing to note is if your opponent is trying to make a 9 inch charge on 2d6 um, with a reroll, they're at 52%. And if you tangle foot them at 9 inches, they now drop to 10%. Now, if we go back to nine inches, when they don't have a reroll, if you tangle foot, and they have no modifiers, um, and they don't get to reroll, they're at 4.6%. So effectively, as a custodian's army, your infantry, you don't need to really screen versus a deep strike charge um, if the opponent doesn't have any modifiers and they don't have any rerolls left. So I'm thinking, you know, units like Lich Guard, who might want to Veil of Darkness in turn one, for example, you don't really need to worry about it too much. Um, and even if they do reroll, you still don't need to worry about it too much because they go to they only go to a ten percent chance. So, what are the conclusions on Tanglefoot? Um, so, you should always be considering your CP and the opponent CP. Like, who has more, who has less, who can, who needs to save their CP for some strat they're going to use in the future. You know, do you need to, to save your CP for some some key stratagem in future turns, etc. And the other thing is to consider squad size. So against very large squads, um, even if you're unable to stop their charge, if you stop a significant proportion of their models being able to get into engagement range after they pile in, it might still be worth to tangle for her. Um, so there are no really easy, strict, hard rules on when tangle foot is good. Um, but for me, looking at the data, I kind of, 
if the opponent doesn't have CP left or is unlikely to expend CP, if you can do it on a 4 inch charge on 2d6 unmodified, um, that's kind of my cutoff range and above that becomes very good, becomes even better. Um, and if the opponent does have CP, then I usually do it at around the 6 inch charge range um, to drop them from 89% to 44% or better. Because obviously you have to remember, if you're tangle footing, you're spending CP. And if you force your opponent to also spend the CP, then you're kind of at parity on CP expenditure. And I think I would spend one CP to drop somebody from 89% to 44% um, to make a charge. But I probably wouldn't do it for, you know, for example, 99.5 to 80% because, you know, one in five times, they're still going to make their charge. So would I spend one CP to make somebody fail the charge one in five times? You know, you might do if this is your Hail Mary chance to, to win the game. But in normal circumstances... Um, you know, I kind of wouldn't do that. So I hope this table is kind of useful for people to to kind of gauge when they should be using Tanglefoot and when they shouldn't. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, short episode. And if you liked, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you very much.